My name is Shade George, and it all began the day I arrived in America. Shade is a young woman who is Nigerian, and she comes to America with, you know, with dreams like everyone who migrates into the country. I've been thinking about your situation and what we can do. Because if you think about it, you, you could have a really great career here in this country. Is there anything that you think I can do? I need to become a legal immigrant first. I know that. But what do you have to do to become legal? Frankly, from what everyone says, marry an American citizen. She's here looking at the new world, trying to learn, and she meets this African-American girl. Where did you learn how to do all that? What were you studying, nursing or something? No, medicine. I was in medical school. Americans aren't enlightened enough about Africa, and we haven't uh, taken enough initiative to learn about one another. I received a MySpace message from, uh, from Rahman, the director, talking about a movie that he wanted to do. You know, I read the script, it was very good. When Shade, who is my niece, comes to America, my character has a real chance to actually do something good, meaning by that helping the family, and helping the families by helping the niece, and by helping the niece, he'll help himself. Everyone has a story about immigration officers. I think there's a lot of African pride in the, in the film, and a lot of Nigerian pride. My decision to come to the United States and learn from making created a, a, a storm. When I told my father, actually, he said, film, well, what, are you, what is he about? What are you going to be doing to making films? Uh, initially, I, I, I lied to him. Excuse me. Hi, I'm so sorry to disturb you. Um, did you just move into the Mandela homes? Yes, you live there? No, but I was delivering food the other night and I saw you and some gentlemen carrying some baggage into the apartments. Really? Yeah, and because I haven't seen you around, I figured that, you know, maybe you weren't new around here. Soul Sisters is the story of uh, friendship between two young women. One of them is a Nigerian immigrant, and the other one is an African-American. It's about friendship. It's about um, two young ladies who find friendship. Marlene Dovilos, she plays the role of the Nigerian character Shade George. She's an upcoming uh, actor. Uh, she started out in Boston. She has the passion to be, to be an actor, and she, she gave everything to it. And, uh, and you can see it on the screen. She learned to, to talk like a Nigerian uh, and act like a Nigerian girl. Don't cook. Not often. I'm too busy. Maybe it's time for you to get married. Auntie Mary worries about that all the time. She needs better things to worry about. I'll get you some water. She comes to America with, you know, with dreams like everyone who migrates into the country. And she wants to go to finish school and just pursue an, a career and just be successful. She is a medical student in Nigeria, but she leaves, uh, she leaves the school uh, uh, four years into, the, into her education because she has been trying to come to the United States even before she got into the school. So she thought things would be better by coming out here. I think she always knew that she was strong, but realizing that, you know, she's going to make it rather it's in America or in Nigeria. So I think, you know, that 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 was what was behind it. So she's here looking at the new world, trying to learn, and she meets this African-American girl who, her problem is she's trying to hold together the uh, integrity of her family. Has Tyree given you the money yet? No, he said he'll give it to me next week. Told you he won't give it to you. Business isn't slow. Business is always slow. Mom, business is slow, all right? I work there and I would know it. She works with the father and she lives with the mother in a way to be able to connect both of them and uh, with the hope of really bringing them back together again. You know, and maybe you need to start trusting him more. The way he trusts me, don't even start that again. Sonia and Sade meet just in passing. One was going into the library, one was coming out, and Sonia initiated the you know, conversation because she had seen Sade moving in with her uncle, moving in when she moved in with her uncle because they live in the same building. Where are you from? I am Nigerian. Nigeria? Oh, wow, I love Nigeria. I think it's such a beautiful country. Thank you. If you ever want to get together and hang out or like read or sure. something, then. <laughs> that is nice of you. Sonia doesn't really know about 
other cultures a lot. She knows some, but a lot of them are just, you know, myths. So I think meeting Sade taught her a lot about, you know, Africa. And I think she just, they helped each other in, in a lot of ways, you know, and a lot of their strengths and their weaknesses, and they, they just became really good friends. You know, you remind me of a girl I knew in high school. Her name was Anna. Who? Anna, do you know her? She was from Africa. <laughs> Sonia, do not tell me you ask silly questions like that. Like what? Questions as if Africa is a village where everyone knows one another. No, Anna was a Nigerian. There are about 130 million people in Nigeria. Uh oh, <laughs> maybe I do that. Maybe not. I think they realized that they weren't as different as they thought, you know, being African and African American, you know. Sonia realized, you know, that just being African American is not so different from an African. And Shade, you know, saw the same. So I think that, you know, they learned a lot in their friendship. I've never dated an African man. Well, you've not missed much. Well, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, you, what are they like? Well, they are controlling. They make noise about sex. And some still want to marry more than one wife. <laughs> What about African-American men? Oh, same thing. <sighs> you know, that looks like there's pretty much gonna be a challenge no matter where you go with these guys, huh? <laughs> I saw in Soul Sisters that these two girls are sisters. They've been torn apart by centuries of bitter history. And they're looking at one another that we are not blood related. So how are we related? But we know we are related. You know, your father is not my father, but we are related in the core, something beyond the blood, something that goes deeper than the blood. In the soul, we are sisters. It's not a character that's happy because he's not doing what he wants to be. It's almost as if uh, he's in prison, you know, in America. He's not a great guy, but unfortunately, it's the situation, it's society that forces him to act the way he does. They just called. They stopped her at the airport. What? I, I, I'm just waiting for a phone call. I know they're questioning her about the visa. The visa? She did not tell them she was coming for the conference? She did. But they said she should have been in a group, not alone. You know, they gave them this visa as a group. I play the character of Ty. He came here to, to become somebody better than, than, than what he was in. Uh, in Nigeria, but unfortunately, because of the immigration problems, he ended up doing only small jobs and was never able to do what he was set to do, was never able to actually help his people back in the country. No, honestly, I, I, I don't know. I have my own issues with the immigration. I cannot put my head out right now. His pride wouldn't allow him to go back to Nigeria empty. Ended. So, uh, so yeah, so he was forced to stay here and struggle here and he ended up being by himself, not married. If she calls again, tell her to stick to the story. The conference is real. They can check on that. If she insists she's coming for the conference, they might let her go. When Shade, who is my niece, comes to America, uh, uh, my character has a real chance to actually uh, do something good. This is so beautiful. This is our bus stop. I end up driving a cab and, um, and yeah, so of course it's not a character that's happy because he's not doing what he wants to be. It's almost as if uh, he's in prison, you know, in America. So frustration comes, uh, comes through and, um, and yeah, he's not, he's, not, he's not a great guy, but unfortunately it's the situation, it's society that forces him to act the way he does, especially against his own niece, in that case, who is Shade, that young girl that came from, uh, from Nigeria. Shade's relationship with her uncle, she, he, he's not her blood uncle, but they, she grew up knowing him as her uncle because he was a close family friend. So when she comes to America, her parents 
trust him, you know, with their daughter and she moves in with him, you know, under the impression that, you know, he's gonna look after her, you know, and just be a, be a supportive uncle. How much you want to give her? Um, me, four dollars. Ah, oh, come on, Sam. That's way below minimum wage. That's the you cannot do that's that to her. That's the government's her. minimum wage. This is under the table. I'm taking a risk here. We're family. Take it or leave it. If the government comes here, who are they going to take? I'm the one taking the risk. That's all I have. You know that's not fair. You know that. Nothing is fair in life, then. When does she start? When she came to America, she had this false hope almost. Like she thought that it was this magical land, you know, and she wasn't aware of how things are hard, you know, and how it's just, you know, sometimes no matter how hard you work, some things are just, you know, extremely hard. So I think she wasn't prepared for the struggle here. What about the visa? Is it still good? My visa expires in one month from now. It wasn't too hard to, you know, kind of relate. Because some of the things she's been through, you know, I went through, so. Some of it, you know, it was from my personal experience. Some of it, were, you know, things that friends have gone through. And so, I think, you know, that kind of helped, I guess. T, can you hear me? T, can you hear me? You will be okay. Whatever you do, let my boy die, miss. Sonia, give me a hand. Shawnee. You saved that man's life. Where did you learn how to do all that? In school. Like, what were you studying, nursing or something? No, medicine. I was in medical school. You were in medical school? Are you kidding? No, I attended for four years before I came here. Wow. Their friendship is what helps them to, uh, to be able to have a better understanding of their different situations. And, uh, and of their lives in general. I've been thinking about your situation and what we can do. Because if you think about it, you, you could have a really great career here in this country. Is there anything that you think I can do? I need to become a legal immigrant first. I know that. But what do you have to do to become legal? Frankly, from what everyone says, marry an American citizen. I'm Curtis. Shade. Uh, Thank you all for being here. Can I get you, guys, you a drink? I'm sure you guys are uh -huh. all aware. Shade and Curtis, um, they were very different. But I think Shade was looking for love. And, um, you know, and from hearing what other people, you know, from taking kind of advice from other people, she felt, you know, that probably was the best decision at the time to you know, marry Curtis, you know, to get stabilized. I'm the only black guy in the staff. So they feel free to do as they like. Why not report them to your boss? Birds are the same feather. You know, he once said that there must have been a mistake at HR somewhere and that they wouldn't have hired me. He said that to you? Not in those exact words, but all you gotta do is read between the lines. He said that they never hired a black person before. Maybe you should let them know that you can take legal actions. I don't think we take the chance to understand the differences, you know, in different cultures. You know, because it's a, there's the language barrier, you know, and that's first. And then just, you know, just our different views, our different, you know, ethics, you know, some things, you know, that might be important to an African, you know, a Nigerian. Would not, might not be as important, you know, we're number one priority to African American and vice versa. So I think, you know, that is something, you know, that's, that's big. I wrote a little, a little something, something for my wife. It's a little poem that I call The Heavenly Gift. Uh, and it goes a little bit like this <clears throat> A good woman's love, a soul lifting treasure, comes only in a blue moon. Shade, my heart is glad whenever I dwell upon your beauty and your grace. How I wish time freezes whenever I'm with you, whenever I speak to you, and whenever your voice sings to my ears. Thank you.
I received a MySpace message from, uh, from Raman, the director, talking about a movie that he wanted to do in Boston. You know, I, at the time I was receiving a lot of those messages. It has been two months, still no job. One would think that the moment you reach America, everything would be at your fingertips. After my high school, I decided to uh, come to the United States to learn filmmaking. It was, uh, that was when I got bitten by the bug. The reflections that I, I had growing up was um, most of the films that I watched as a, as a little boy were, um, they were all cinematic uh, uh, productions uh, funded, sometimes funded by uh, uh, Hollywood, uh, because at that time the economy was very good. Uh, but the images, actually, what, what they were presenting were informed. Some of them were informed by what uh, uh, Hollywood expected them to tell. So in that way, the image that I had was not, um, was not something that made me feel comfortable. Like, I remember dreaming whenever I watched movies at time. It, movie actors seemed to me like gods in, in some faraway land that you could never reach. You just imagine. Uh, and, um, but for Africans, it's, it's, it's totally different. I received a MySpace message from, uh, from Raman, the director talking about a movie that he wanted to do in Boston. You know, I, at the time I was receiving a lot of those messages and I'm like, okay, just, just send me something, you know, so I know, before I say no, so I know what I'm saying no to. He sent the script, you know, I read the script, I thought it was very good. Um, at least it was extremely current uh, as far as the situation here in America is concerned and to have someone doing a movie about immigration. And yeah, uh, it was pretty well written and uh, that's why I said, Okay, why not? Let's let's just go for it. Making Soul Sisters um, has been a, a difficult journey. When I started, after writing the screenplay, I, I was looking for money, looking for actors at the same time. Um, but first, getting money was uh, very difficult because it was it was the first time that I would be making a movie, and even though it was my f first movie, I didn't just wanted to make it as say, okay, let me just do something and let it be out there, and then when I move on to the next one, I'll be learning. At times, I prefer to, to actually take a look at the material, because what might not bring a lot of money for the agent or for the manager might be something uh, extremely fulfilling for me to do. So, so that's why I always encourage people to just send me the material. If I like it, I'll do it, whether there is money or not in the gig. You going down the street? You want to drop me? Not in service. I, I got some money to pay you, pal. I expect you to drive me for free. I am not in service. Uh, then what the f are you doing here? You fing loser. You're never on service. What do you want from me, you crazy junkie, huh? If you ain't picking passengers, then bounce and let some other motherfucker come here. Yeah, let's keep moving. Well, I guess because uh, of my involvement already, you know, accepting to do it, and uh, I, I wanted to, to do it as best as possible, you know, meaning by that having, having something to say on how some of the things were going to be done. And, um, and yeah, and that, 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 that's how. I think in, in many occasions, you know, my input meant something you know, uh, not just as an actor, but, uh, but also as a, as a producer. When I wrote the screenplay, I didn't want to pretend that, uh, that I knew how every one of them should, should be, especially the African-American characters. Home is all that is in your mind. You don't even think of putting things right. I folded all the shirts. Would you have done it if I didn't tell you? Is that what you seriously have to put up with? Can we just get out of here, please? No! 
Sade, who the hell does that guy think he is? Come on, Sonia, let's go. Uh, coming from Nigeria, growing up in Nigeria, uh, you know, I didn't know how an, 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 uh, the way an African-American would see it, react to a situation and all that. But over the years that I've been living here, I've been learning. But still, uh, those years, I, I, I couldn't pretend that those years were enough for me to say this is how an African-American woman will react to this specific situation. The way I wrote the screenplay, I, I tried very hard to make everything together, but I get, when I gave it to them, even before production at all, I gave it to the actors and I told them, whatever you think you want to change in it, let me know and we will work it out. We, if, it, if I have any objection, we will debate it and whoever wins, that's what goes into it. If I agree straight away, yes, we'll go. So what are you gonna do? I mean, you can't let him take advantage of you like that. I do not know. I hear things from people, but I have got to figure out what is real. I made the changes, many of them that I agreed with, and I learned from those suggestions. Uh, because one of the things is also that the different experiences that we, we've been having, uh, the, the strength, the, the, the importance that we attach to different things. Of course, I want to be learning uh, from one to another, but I wanted Soul Sisters to be very good enough uh, to, to be true technically to the story that I wanted to tell. And um, so I was really looking for people who knew what they were doing. I had to borrow money to start. And it was, uh, so it was when I started and camera was rolling. Selecting the, the crew also, it was a, it was a, a, a long journey because I was looking for people who actually could, give, could capture my vision. The vision at the beginning was that something we could do like in uh, about three months. Uh, we didn't have the budget to shoot straight. So the plan was to shoot on weekends, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Because we, we don't shoot every day in Boston like in, in LA, that helped it. Just once in a while, we, we were pressed to film in some places with our permits and we didn't have, we were, there was no time to run back and forth to work out the permit, so we had to try our best and see if we could uh, get what we, what we wanted. And we, we were able to do some guerrilla filmmaking uh, uh, at that time. I was blessed, the people that I found, uh, very, very good uh, individuals, uh, very good professionals. So they all loved the story, so everything became not just about the money, but about, yes, we would like to tell this story with you. Um, you know, thank God we pulled through. I was born in Nigeria, in uh, Oyo town, Oyo state in Nigeria. And um, my background actually influenced the way I look at the world. My decision to come to the United States and learn from making created a, a, a storm. When I told my father, actually, he said, film, what, what is he about? What are you going to be doing to making films? Uh, initially, I, I, I lied to him uh, because at that time, to get a visa from Nigeria to come to the U.S. was very, very difficult. So I told him that uh, I, I was putting filmmaking on my visa application so they could give me the visa because if you say you are going for accounting, the, uh, the embassy will tell you you have a lot of uh, accounting courses here in Nigeria, why will you be going to the United States to do it? So I said I have to give them something that we don't have and we don't have any filmmaking. <laughs> my father, was a, he was a film lover which was one of the uh, things I was eventually able to use to sell the idea to him. I was telling him that, you know, it's because uh, the way Africans have been shown on film has not been good, that's one, and the, the remuneration from it also ha has not been impressive, but it's, it's something that can change. It's not going to be like this, and some, you know, we, some, some of us have to do it. I was born in Nigeria, in uh, or your town, or your state in Nigeria. My family was upper class uh, at, at, at around the time that I was born, but things changed. The, the, the fortune of the family changed during the transition from one administration to another because um, that's one of the problems that Nigeria has been facing, the military uh, regimes. My background actually influenced the way I look at the world, the experiences that, um, that, 
define, not to say define in a specific way, but that define in, in uh, all different aspects of African Americans and the experiences that define Africans in all the different aspects. In today's world, they've been very similar. And uh, so the, the, the uh, African Americans and, uh, and African immigrants are still closely connected than uh, appear on the surface. You didn't leave your country because you needed to come and meddle in someone else's problems. You came because you wanted to find a solution to your own. We may have come in on different ships, but we are in the same boat. An issue in, the, in Soul Sisters is the relationship between African immigrants here and African Americans. Uh, but I met a group, the group of African Americans that I met when I came, they were very welcoming. They treated me like, uh, uh, like their brothers, sisters, even uh, their own son. Hi, Tyree. Hey, Shade. Sorry about the recent events of the past days. Thank you. Sonia and I were talking, we were wondering if there might be something we can do to help at this point. It was then that I started uh, learning how to, the process of making films. And uh, a lot of things that I was also encountering, the lady who actually introduced me to the filmmaking community in Boston, her name is uh, Deborah Sharif. Her husband has another organization called Afro Optimism that he started uh, uh, to be able to educate uh, Americans in general about Africa. He uh, believed that Americans aren't uh, uh, enlightened about enough about Africa. So the information that I was getting from that together with my uh, 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 developing skills in filmmaking led to the writing of Soul Sisters. And uh, what surfaced again and again uh, was the fact that the only root of the problem that we have uh, was misinformation, that we haven't uh, taken enough initiative to learn about one another, that by the time you actually learn about one another, you, real, you realize that the tension will not exist anymore. I told you, they're racist, and I'm not taking it no more. Well, what do you want me to do, just sit there and let them screw up my life? I do not want anyone to screw your life, but you do not want to screw your life either. You do not have to keep holding on to race to hold yourself back. You have got to rise above it. What the are you talking about? I'm using racism as an excuse? I didn't mean it like that. Then how the you mean it, huh? Tell me. I am not saying that no one is discriminating against you, Curtis. But you can ignore it and just go on and just be the best that you could be. Shade tells Curtis, you know, that we're all the same. You know, our skin's the same, you know, no matter where, you know, what part of the country, um, the, you know, world we come from. So I think that was important to, you know, put that out there that, you know, being African and African American is not really, you know, that different because we're all, you know, before we speak, you know, we look the same. So I think that was important for her to, you know, let him know. The experiences of many African immigrants that I have seen trying to uh, um, get a permanent residence in this country, especially uh, women. Things are not looking good. The problem isn't so much your divorce, but... But I am not divorced yet. But you don't have a husband either. I mean, you don't have a husband to ascertain your marriage status. And the fact that this comes right after you got, you know, you got married and, and, and you filed for a change of status. I mean, this might make the immigration officials suspicious. They really touched me and I wanted to tell that story. So the whole thing came together and I decided to put all this story together and make it into a, a feature. All I can do is try, but clinching on the green cards is just not highly likely at this point. But you are the only hope I have left. Working with Ramon was really nice because he was very helpful. He helped me with the culture just to learn how, you know, the Nigerian culture and how, like, for certain, with certain scenes, you know, the, the being graceful and just, you know, how a Nigerian would carry themselves. So it, he helped a lot and he was really patient. I used to watch a lot of ni Nigerian movies, but I really, you know, went a little bit harder just to kind of see the lifestyle, you know, because I'm not Nigerian. So how was your first day? Very good, son. Yeah, she had fun. Well, good. That's what we do here. It's fun. Yeah, she already knows how to cook most of the food. <laughs> they have the same kinds of food I grew up cooking. I'm Haitian, and um, I've been acting since I was young. But um, while I was in college, I really decided you know, to you know, change my major and go into acting, because it's my passion. It's what I love to do. So how did the visit with your uncle go?
I think uh, the Pan-African Film Festival has been very great in being able to bring all of us together from all parts of the world and we're able to see what we are doing and uh, inspire one another from it. Hello. What's up, Mr. T? You not coming? <clears throat> what? I didn't see you all morning. Is everything okay? Jesus Christ. <coughs> uh, sorry, sorry, man. I'll be there in 20 minutes. The screenings that we've we've had so far. Um, the response from the from the audience has been inspiring. We screened it uh, at Boston um, uh, when we completed it, just for uh, the Boston city for them to see what we've been doing. Uh, we screened it at the time, and people responded very well. It's generating interest and in being able to reach out and learn about the other side which is what I think has been the main problem, which is my goal for us to be able to learn that we all have, we have history and our present is determined by our history and it influences how we perceive our world in general. Telling a, 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 telling a story, I find storytelling as very, very important to life in general, which is why I am, uh, I'm, happy and excited to be a, a, a storyteller through film. Look at me, tell me what you say. I feel stories, uh, our lives in general, uh, are dictated by stories. You know what? Even with this entire situation, even though it leaves me torn, I always ask myself, am I African or, or am I African-American? Mm. But one good thing that has come out of this is the fact that it makes me want to learn more about Africa, you know, become more educated. There's a, there's a dance between the, the audience and the, and the storyteller that if, if it's well synchronized, everything looks beautiful and we all learn and grow from it. When people see this movie, they are able to realize that problem that their history, the misinformation in our history has done to the way we see ourselves. So that is, that is, uh, that is uh, inspiring in what I've been saying. I've been looking forward to being at the uh, Pan-African uh, Film Festival since the time we started uh, production. And uh, I think it's, it's a great, great platform for uh, African movies. I've been expecting something big, but I even uh, what I got was even bigger than, than what I expected. Uh, and it, it, it brought everybody together. That's, that's something I see. And by doing that every year, bringing people by, by which the relationship continues and uh, it's, it's just amazing. It was Jimmy, Jimmy John Louis, that first told me about it uh, when we started production, that he said, uh, you have to get it to the Pan-African Film Festival. And um, at that time he told me, he said, uh, you know this. He was telling me about individuals in Nigeria that are in the film industry that I didn't know. When I applied for the Pan-African Film Festival, because I was excited to bring it out here, and especially because it's happening in the Black History Month. I've been thinking of taking uh, Soul Sisters to Nigeria, though I've been talking to some people, but there is one important figure in, uh, in the Nigerian film industry, which was Peace Anyam, uh, that runs the AMA Award. The two times that I've been to Nigeria, I was never able to get in touch with her. And, uh, and here, she was here, and we met finally, and she was able to see my movie. and now saying, okay, yeah, we'll be in touch. I think uh, the Pan-African Film Festival has been very great in being able to bring all, all of us together from all parts of the world, and we're able to see what we are doing and uh, inspire one another from it and uh, be able to, you, you, it makes you, it, it takes you from feeling alone 
because I met a lot of uh, Nigerian filmmakers here that I didn't know exist, you know, <laughs> from different parts of the country. And it, it, it's, uh, it empowers you, it makes you feel like you're not alone. And the same with, you know, the African-American filmmakers, people who are trying to tell these stories. And every one of us, we are coming together and we say, yeah, we are independent filmmakers, uh, or people of color, and uh, we want to tell our own story. And we want to, so it's, it's, it's been great. And uh, I'm, I'm really grateful, you know, for, for this platform. Shooting in Nigeria is something that I've been dreaming, really dreaming to do. But I have to take into consideration a lot of uh, elements that will have to come together. But I am hoping to, to shoot in Nigeria. Not to give it up, the Nigerian girl, she makes a decision towards the end in that second to the last scene. The African-American disagrees with the decision, but when they discuss it back and forth, the development in their character over the course of the story is revealed right there. I'm a Haitian playing a Nigerian, but I have to say that I've played Nigerian so many times now. Uh, let me see. I've played a Nigerian on The Shield, uh, with Tears of the Sun, post release, Fat Girls, uh, Soul Sisters. I shot a movie in Nigeria where I also played Nigerian. So I think I've played Nigerian a lot to, to almost. Uh, deserve a Nigerian passport at this point. <laughs> he brought the, this uh, huge background of having work in all sorts of production from Hollywood to very independence. So he brought that to the table and it was very, very helpful. I came to this country full of dreams 15 years ago. And now nothing but complete failure. This was my only chance to help someone to do better. <laughs> and I screwed it. <laughs> it doesn't bother me to, to, be, to be mistaken or to be taken for Nigerian. Yeah. It's all for the, for the better. If anything, I enjoy um, playing Nigerian, but I also enjoy uh, taking part of, uh, of the growth of uh, the Nigerian film industry. I think there's a lot of African pride in the, in the film and a lot of Nigerian pride because, you know, Sade is really proud to be Nigerian and she carries herself with that grace. I think it tells the story of, like, why people come here. Sometimes, you know, it might be best for an individual to go back, you know, willingly and because they love their country. Sorry about your mother. She was proud to be Nigerian, you know, and, and she embraced her country. And even, you know, in everything that she did, she still kept her culture, you know, she kept, you know, all her, you know, her roots and she didn't compromise. Look, since Miss George has been in this country, she's been of good conduct and been productive, useful to society. These are the values that we hold in esteem in this country. If, if Miss George doesn't deserve residence here, I, I don't know who does. Thank you, Miss George. You have anything more to say? Even though she knew she was strong, I think she realized that she's stronger than she'd ever thought. And you know, and that I think her, her love for her country just, you know, she realized, you know, that much more how much, you know, she loved her country and you know, how proud she was of her country. I left my country not to come here and break the laws, but I was looking for a place to nurture my life, I think. She knew that, you know, it wasn't gonna, her road journey here wasn't going to be easy, and she was ready for that. Fellow citizens, we are gathered here today in support of Sade George, who is seeking residency in this country. Right. However, not just for Sade, but for all immigrants who are seeking residency in this country. Yeah. 
not to give it up, the Nigerian girl, she makes a decision towards the end in that second to the last scene. And um, the African-American, she disagrees with the decision. But when they discuss it back and forth, the, the development in their character over the course of the story is revealed right there. I just do not want to cause you any trouble. Shade, you're not causing us any trouble. I could make things easy. And um, one thing that I also like in that scene is the fact that I always tell people that we, uh, as Africans, when we come here, we love Africa. It's, you know, Africa is our land. For the past couple of days, all you've been doing is worrying. And you know it's not good for you. There's a proverb in Nigeria that says, whatever you own doesn't really have much value to you. That it's what you don't have that tends to have value. And I think even though we are Africans, we love Africa, we, we, we know about Africa and all that, but that, there, is a, there is something that when we come here, we learn from African-Americans about Africa. I think I should go back to Nigeria. What? Well, Charlie, what are you talking about? I think it would be better for everyone. No, Shade, you can't give up. We can do this. We can find something to do about this. Our, our lawyer, he says that we have options, that we can appeal so that way you don't have to go back. I'm sorry, but I think I should go back. The gentleman that, I start, that started the organization that I told you about, um, sorry, the uh, Afro -optimi uh, Optimism Organization, when he told me the first time he went to Africa, he, he's a Muslim, so he said the first day as he landed in Africa, he worshipped the Islamic way, which is putting your head to the ground and, you know, like kissing the ground uh, uh, metaphorically. And I said, the f I told him, I said, the first day I came to America, I did that. <laughs> so I put that in the, in, in the story. But in this last scene, I reveal that thing that Africans come to learn. Shadi, what would you do if you went back to Nigeria? I could do many things. People are there and they are doing something. And besides, I have lived there for 24 years and I have never kissed that. I feel uh, uh, strengthened by this idea of being able to use film to let people see who they are, the strength they have within themselves, what they can endure, what they can do. And for that to be able to connect it with the audience and, and let them see the story and, uh, and see the way it is, you know, it's, it's a big challenge that even it, it shudders my heart <laughs> again and again. I hope for it to be distributed as widely as possible, not only even here, but in Africa. So we're, talk we're talking with, uh, we're discussing with Nigeria right now to be able to release the movie in Nigeria as well and then some other uh, African countries. We'll do all that's in our power to keep her here. She's part of the family now. I know how you feel, but the law is what it is. You, you can't change it. Her age precludes her from the adoption option. I mean, that's just it. She's still young. She still has her education to complete and all that. Hey, look. I'm doing my best. All right, but the lawmakers just don't see what you see. We have on our hands an individual here. This young lady needs to remain in this country. So what are you going to do to help us? Yeah, I think it's a wonderful project. I think it says a lot about the um, Nigerian culture. I think it says a lot just about immigration and the system and you know, what it is when one does come to America, the process that it takes. And you know, I think it's something to be proud of, you know, and the ending, I think it's awesome. You know, I think, you know, Nigerians will be proud of the film, you know, and it's something to see. I hope many people will have a chance to see it, uh, to see the movie. I hope it will bring a bit of uh, awareness in both countries, uh, in Nigeria and in America. Uh, I hope it will help Americans understand Nigerians better and vice versa. I think Soul Sister shows that, you know, the grass is not always greener. You know, that sometimes, you know, where you are, you think, you know, something else is better, but, you know, you, you're fine where you are, you know, and it's one thing, it's, but it's good to find out, you know, that it's not greener because that way you're, you're, you're more content. So I think, you know, 
that showed a little bit of that. Hopefully, things will change as well because that subject of, of immigration is is a very difficult one for not just for 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 for, for foreigners, but also for Americans. You know, we have to find better ways to deal with that. Thank you for everything. Take care of yourself, sweetie. I will. Thank you, Tyree. Power to the people! 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 I am happy to see Soul Sisters representing that, uh, the way we tell the story and the, the information in the story. And I, I think they, they come together very, very well and, and I'm, I'm very proud of it. Panasonic is the official camera of the Africa Channel.